What's going on, Jerome's? So we're at an impasse with Daniil Hunter, superstar edge rusher, uh, between him and the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. Will they keep him? Will they extend him? Uh, will it be a long-term deal or just a band-aid for 2023? Or will they ultimately trade Daniil? Now, we've talked about in terms of trade value uh, in recent uh, deals, in terms of premium edge rushers. Uh, sometimes you get a lot and we've always set our line of demarcation for Bradley Chubb, first and a third, first and a fourth, somewhere in there. Uh, but circumstances sometimes, you know, uh, Von Miller traded in season for a second and a third from Denver to the Rams, and then Khalil Mack for a second and a sixth from the Bears to the Chargers. Uh, Yannick the freaking Gakwe has been traded a couple times. He's still a free agent, by the way, all, all that stuff. Robert Quinn basically just a salary dump for a fourth midseason last year. Didn't really pan out in Philadelphia. But, yeah, Daniil is still – in the thick THICC of his prime at 28, going to be 29 in October. So he should and could uh, fetch very good value if the Vikings do decide to trade him. Plus, the Vikings have leverage here because they can hold Daniil's feet to the fire and be like, hey, you play out the rest uh, of your contract, otherwise it's going to toll, and then we'll do this whole song and dance again. I don't think it'll get to that point, but also the Vikings do have significant interest in keeping him, and the leverage that you have in all negotiations is the ability to walk away, and the Vikings certainly have that if they want to keep Daniil if they don't get uh, a decent trade offer. And our, our guy Luke Easterling over at Athlon Sports, part of USA Today, did up a piece. What could the Vikings get for Daniil Hunter? Da, 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 da. So this is what Luke wrote. Uh, but what could uh, that kind of deal net for the Vikings? Hunter won't be the first big-name pass rusher to be traded away from Minnesota this offseason. Rude. As a Darius Smith. Da, 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 da. So uh, re reminding people of the Zadarius Smith trade compensation wasn't a lot. So just a, a swappy swap, uh, upgrading a sixth to a fifth and a seventh to a fifth, uh, as well as the Vikings paid a minimal amount of Zadarius' salary. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, but even though Smith made the third Pro Bowl last year, he'll turn 31 in early September, while Hunter will turn just 29 in late October. Hunter also has three Pro Bowls under his belt, including last year. That being the case, it's likely the Vikings could get more than a couple fifth round picks for Hunter and a pair of late rounders uh, like they did with the Smith deal, uh, thanks to age and history of production. But if another team wanted a 28-year-old pass rusher with a track record of production, they could sign Unique the Freak Ngakwe, which checks both of those boxes and he and remains a free agent. Although stylistically and scheme fit wise are two different players as well as Yannick ain't about that run defense life and uh, Daniil is plus Daniil a little bit more adept on the strong side of the field left side and strong side uh, Yannick uh, can play both sides pretty adeptly but it probably would be best utilized as a stand-up 3-4 outside linebacker which is the Viking scheme right now hmm. uh, the fact that the player remains available might hurt hunter's chances of landing a big long-term extension he's seeking and might prevent other teams from giving up valuable draft capital just for the right to give him that deal so uh, i understand the point that he's making that daniel is you know, trying uh, potentially looking for a trade while yannick is still out there but <sighs> daniel hunter is a little bit different where Yannick is specifically a pass rusher and a little bit of a mercenary, as we've seen as he's bounced around from team to team to team. Uh, but Daniil, remember, we're, we're only a handful of years removed from Daniil Hunter being an elite game-changing edge rusher. Back-to-back 14-and-a-half sack seasons 2018-2019. He was second in league in pressures 2019 uh, as well. Uh, and it got derailed by the herniated disc in his neck in 2020, torn pec in 2021, although he still recorded six sacks in seven games, which was pretty damn good. And then last year, scheme change, asking him to be a stand-up outside linebacker for the first time since his days at LSU. Uh, so the fact that he was able to rack up uh, ten and a half sacks last year while transitioning uh, to a different uh, position as well as doing a lot of things new to him and learning on the fly, it's really impressive. It, it truly is. And Daniil's contract is the sticking point right now. Uh, they've uh, pushed forward uh, some of the back-end money, so now there's not a lot there. $4.9 million base, a half million in incentives as a roster bonus. So that's it. That's it. And Daniil, he's still in the thick of his prime, man. He still absolutely is at 28, going to be 29. And I think that this may come down to a scheme thing where, again, I trust Flores to put Daniil in the best position to succeed, whether it's three down linemen, four down linemen, whatever. But maybe Daniil and his agent, maybe they want to go back to a, a traditional 4-3 under team and he can be at left side defensive end and just dominate the way that he did back in 2018, 2019. No worrying about coverage, no this, no that, no worrying about standing up, just hand in the dirt, get after it, stop the run, set the edge, and on a third down, go get the quarterback. 
And maybe he just wants that simplicity. But like I said, it would be a damn shame if the Vikings don't at least get a first-round pick, at minimum a second and a third for Daniil uh, in this spot because I've defended Kwesi quite a bit, and I I see the merit in a lot of the trades that he's done. But if he lets Daniil out the door for less than premium draft capital, it's hard to defend that one. It it really would be because, uh, again – Given the right situation, I think that Daniil could thrive being the 2018-2019 Daniil, the absolute game wrecker uh, that he was back in the day. So I guess we'll see what happens. But yeah, settling for yeah, a fourth-round pick for Daniil ain't going to happen. Now, especially since the Vikings do have uh, do have inclination to keep him, as well as contractually, they, they do have that power as well. But your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Athlon Sports a- estimates that uh, Daniil Hunter is going to get maybe slightly above Zadari Smith's trade value. Mm. I'll let us know your thoughts and our thoughts and their thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes once worth the work. Put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, Skull Production Value.